My name is Mark, and I'm here with Mark <laughs> Coscamp, who is the organist here at Trinity Presbyterian, or Trinity United Presbyterian. Trinity United, because there were two Presbyterian churches, the oh. United Presbyterian and First Presbyterian, and when they joined, the denominations joined, and so these congregations joined. And since it really is the union of two congregations, they wanted to keep United in there. Not because it's the old UP church, but because it's the union of two congregations. Very cool. Good to know. And we have here a Dobson instrument. Um, I think you told me it was installed in 1982? 1982. February of 1982 is number 17. Oh, wow. It's a pretty early one. It's a pretty early one. Yes, it is. Yeah. And then um, I also believe uh, this was the inspiration for an instrument that was uh, installed in St. Louis at the Unitarian Church there. Uh, yeah, and actually a couple others as, as well. The, uh, this instrument was replacing an old SD organ that had been here for 76 years from early in the 1900s. And it was losing its steam and they needed a new organ and there was a wonderful lady in this congregation that went to her 50th high school reunion, sat next to Elmer Dobson and said, Elmer, <laughs> What's your son doing? And Elmer said, he's building pipe organs. And Grace said, well, we need a new organ oh, wow. at my church. And so this is it. And Lynn was anxious to get a good organ in the central Iowa area where it was easier for organ committees to get there. Sure. So this was early on, number 17. And he had had people come to Lake City to see the Union Church. But that was out of the way, and it's easier to get to Des Moines. So I remember search committees from Independence and Iowa City and Pella and Clive and St. Louis. I know that I demoed this organ for at least those and I know that the Unitarians in St. Louis bought a Dobson and Faith Lutheran Church in Clive bought a Dobson. <laughs> uh, the Methodists in Iowa City bought a Holt Camp. They didn't oh, buy no. a Dobson. <laughs> and the uh, Second Christian Reformed Church in Pella bought a Dobson which now they're going to sell to a congregation in Pennsylvania. But Anyway, so he wanted a demo organ that was easier to get to. And, sure. and so Grace knew Elmer, and here it is. So this, is, this was a showpiece for quite a while then? For a while, yes. Yeah, great. Okay. And is this bigger or smaller than the SD, you know, rank-wise? Uh, that I can't tell you, but my guess is it's bigger, certainly more powerful. Sure. Those old uh, tracker organs from 1900 were delicate. Yes. <laughs> in their voicing, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, yeah, so, uh, so how many ranks do we have here? We have 30 ranks and 22 stops. Okay, and, uh, and you know, one of the things that people are probably noticing um, in the video is that we don't have what would be thought of as typical stop controls on this instrument. No, these are, these are sliders, and so you could turn on all the cornet or all the principal planum, or if you, you know, you, you learn how to get the right combinations, as long as your digits are working right, <laughs> right, you get pretty adept at that. Here the both reeds come on at the same time. So I think they made a conscious decision with their consultant at the time that they would rather have more stops than spend the money for pistons. And, and they put I, it in sound. They put it in sound rather sure. than in the, the piston technology. So because of that, they got some extra sounds here, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, for service playing, it's pretty serviceable. If you're doing a recital, then you might want a helper to pull some stops for sure. you at certain places. But, you know, the longer you live with it, the more adept you get at doing it. And, and it is remarkably flexible. And for 1982, when before all the technology had changed and blossomed, and because they were used to an old organ without pistons, the old SD organ, Sure. So they're not missing anything. They weren't missing they just, anything they just when they got better. it. <laughs> yes, that's sure. Right. Okay, and um, so I don't see any couplers up here. So I'm guessing you must have the couplers are down at my toe. Mm -hmm. I can do swell to great, swell to pedal, great to pedal. Okay, and then um, one of the things uh, you know, I, I watched a, a video similar to this one about the Unitarian organ. Um, the pedal only came on with. Uh, with those those types of, of latches. Is your pedal always on? My pedal is always on. Okay. This is a totally independent division. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Nice. So th that's different than than their instrument. So, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I, in fact, I think I watched that video and was surprised to see that because I haven't really run into that before. Right, I, I hadn't either. I thought that was interesting because I was curious if this instrument had that as well. Um, and it looks like, um, do you have some chimes with this as well then too? Uh, yeah, like the, the, chime, the chimes were... Uh, oh wow, those are pretty pretty heavy for chimes. The, well, the, chimes, anyway. the, there's grading from one to five and uh, that was all sure. the way up. Oh, but they were on that old instrument and it was a memorial so we had to make sure they got on this <laughs> instrument is w what I've been told. So. Sure, so, so was, was anything else brought in from the, from the SD to this the, one? Or only the those, only those chimes okay. and then a little later, this was built, but then when the original organist died, as a memorial to him, then they put this little cymbal stern on. Oh, nice. Because he always liked on the Christmas table to have the little candles, and then the heat from the candles rotates the blade and the little tinkly chime. So oh, nice. Okay. He always had that at his home, and <laughs> so this was an appropriate memorial for the organist that had used the old SD and was here for the first year of this instrument. Yeah, so you've been here almost since this instrument was installed. Almost, yeah. It was about a year and a half after this came online that I showed up. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, is there anything else you, that you want us to know about the instrument before we dive into the, the stop demo? Um, I, I think we've covered it. We know <laughs> who built it and why and how it got here and what it replaced. Right. right. And um, so let's see what we have. Okay, well, um, generally, oh, oh, one more thing, actually, just to, to clarify. Um, what is the, the compass of the, of the manuals and, and pedal? Is it, is it the full 61 or is no, it the 58? No, you have a few notes missing here at the top. Okay. And uh, there's only maybe three songs that I've encountered that I run into problems, so you sort of rewrite the ending or so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> or you switch to a different song. <laughs> right. But, that's a cost-saving measure as well. Sure, because how often do you use those types? Yeah, that's yeah. right. And, you know, you're getting older like me. I can't hear some of these tiny little pipes anymore. <laughs> my, my old ears aren't like they used to be. So, who, you know, half the congregation doesn't even know you have those <laughs> you know, upper it's, notes. It's funny how, how often people don't realize just the huge um, scale of, of frequencies that a, that a pipe organ produces. Um, I have, a, I have a virtual pipe organ in my home, and I was uh, playing one of, I think, a, a Tears uh, for my mom in the upper register, and she's like, you're playing something? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People just don't, don't even realize that organs make those sounds sometimes. Well, I guess um, in, in you know, fine traditional fashion, why don't we go ahead and, and start with, uh, well, with a... I'm, oh. starting with, I'm starting with flutes. Oh, you're gonna start with flutes, not principles. Okay. Well, just because that's the way that I had the org... Uh, that's why I have the stack of music. But we can I turn see. it upside down. But... That's okay, we can, we, can, we can start with flutes. So, so this is an eight-foot roar flute. Eight-foot roar flute. Mm -hmm. And this four-foot spitz float eye. So I would use those Here's a little Mozart transcription with this eight foot flute. Very nice. Or I might use this um, four foot flute. This is a uh, uh, Listen, God is calling an African <laughs> hymn, so you might hear. Christmas Eve, I might hear it like this. Mm -hmm. and how I would typically use them. 
And they're all grouped together again yep. because all grouped together. That's so that right. you can grab them easily. Yep. Nice. Then that's part of the cornet, these five flutes. And so mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite things about this instrument. Maybe that's why I wanted to start with the flutes. <laughs> yes. I I think that these little mutations are wonderful. Mm -hmm. And depending on the, the day, you can uh, find a sound that you like. Sure. That's just the two and two thirds Nazard, but if you add that tears to it. Oh, yeah. And, or um, you could even do eight and two. versatility there and I don't necessarily use the same registration every time I play a piece it's partly where it to. is in the service and yeah. I've got a lot of flexibility there and, nice. and you know the whole carnet can come on at a time and so th that works pretty well yeah really easy to grab nice so those are the mutations and uh, the whole flute ranks okay then the, these reeds are in the center so I have some examples of how I might use those reeds. So we have a, a 16 foot dulzion and an 8 foot trumpet. An 8 foot trumpet. So the trumpet, there's a little voice, you know. It's a, it's a large scale trumpet. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yes, nice. And um, the little dulzion, the, uh, this is a Robert Hobby setting of Amazing Grace, and so. So it sounds a little bit like a bagpipe. Sure. Or this uh, Lefebure Welly. He's got some, um, what sounds to me, I like to use it with this dulcian. I don't even know how to say his name, but <laughs> so those are the reeds. But yeah, that's a nice, nice uh, kind of Frenchy reed. Really, it's got got a lot of bite to it. And then we come to the principles. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's kind of a North German sound here. Mm -hmm. If um, if I just do the principles, sometimes I, I might look at. Vaughn Williams. Mm. That's one of my favorite tunes, actually. So. then you uh, might turn on the four foot flute. And with the mixture, and so here's just, those three can come on and off and then. Sure. You get a little. Well, there's a 
like his axe and a principle and an octave. There's the really the two foot. The two foot. Mm -hmm. So if you couple that, now you have the full chorus. So I, I've noticed that you've you've done a lot of accompanying um, from the swell and, and, and melody and the great. Um, with the swell being like right above your head, does that ever kind of give you some challenges in, in your registration or you just know the instrument well enough now that you just know what, what well, you need to do? It, it's always nice to be able to sit out there on occasion to, to hear what the balance is because I, I just have to guess sure. that I have a good balance. The um, Kind of one of those fun tracker things that you... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's so... So close. Immediate right yeah. there. The um, if while we're sort of thinking about the the principles and the, the playing them, mm -hmm. it, if you uh, this organ plays North German stuff pretty well. So here's the eight little preludes and fugues. I think all of us have this book. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even put the forefoot on there, but I could do that. And then a couple. And then you can add the mixture in the pedal. And the 16 foot reed. So those things work really well, or here's a little Handel concerto where I might do uh, in the pedal eight and four, or 16 and four. And then uh, a little chamber music, so I, I don't have the four foot on here. And I'm gonna use the eight and two down here, so it sounds something like this. So those are kind of fun, and, Very nice. and uh, again, I really like these sort of North Germany mm -hmm. chipper. They're really, they speak immediately, and they're cheerful sounding they're really crisp. and crisp. Yeah. yeah. What this instrument does not have a lot of is uh, there are no strings on here at all. Sure. And so if you want some sort of mellow sounds, then you have to uh, hear some Mendelssohn because you do combinations of uh, eight foot and four foot flutes. If you couple those together, you might have, a, here's some a prelude. Or put this principle on and it warms it up a little more. so that it, it has a little bit of, if they're not in tune, that's great, because then that's the only way I'm going to get any kind of celeste <laughs> or warm string sound. Sure. <laughs> some of these things in the swell, right. <laughs> but without necessarily getting there. The, um, we've done some of the, the playing them in the swell. So okay. it pretty much has a, a principal chorus in both divisions. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice here's, mixture. Three rank mixture. Here's, here's the eight and four principles. And add the two. The, here 
third uh, mutation is this one and a third M's quinta. And so then that's kind of fun. Oh, that is nice. And add the four foot. There we go. This is a Michael Burkhart setting of uh, In Babylon. So if you put like, Cornet as my solo on the great, and mm -hmm. then this is in some sort, either with the four or without the four, you could do that. But I don't need a couple. Those are interesting sounds. And yeah. You, uh, whether you do eight and two, again, there's a, there's a lot of versatility here, the eight, four, and the third, or just the eight and one and the third. Even, um, even if you want to leave the four out and put the, all the upper end of the register. That's very bright. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very bright. Nice. The, uh, sometimes I use this one and the third Gims Quinta with the focal flota and an octave lower. Here's a Michael Burkhart, um, Immortal Invisible. It has sort of an Irish whistle yeah. sound to it. So you can do that. And you've been here a long time, pretty soon you Played everything at least an octave higher or an octave lower. <laughs> tried to be creative sure. because you don't have pistons. Then sometimes it's like, okay, I'm just going to try every combination until I find something that works. And, and try to remember what that is. <laughs> yeah, and it might not be exactly what he's suggesting in the registration, sure. but it's what works on this instrument. Organs are always relative. That's right. Their space, since That's their right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then what we haven't done really is the reed on the mm -hmm. swell. So, so it's an eight foot shalmai. And um, and if you put the tremolo on, it sounds like that. And then does the tremulant affect the entire instrument or just the swell division? The entire instrument. The entire instrument. Okay. Fine. And I think we've gone through. Yeah, we, we've heard. heard that. So she said it's, it's completely independent. And we've got a, a 16 foot sous bass. Do you say sous bass or sub bass? I don't know how to say that. I'm, I'm not the gatekeeper of the language, so. <laughs> A 16 foot principle, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> it's a diapason. This, so. this 8 foot croissant, you can. That actually works pretty well if the melody's in the pedal. Sure. And so does this choral bass, the 4 foot. Nice. 16 and 4 together. Mm -hmm. Just the 16 foot forgot. Got a, a four ring mixture, it looks like. Yeah. In there as well. You know. Okay. So you basically have a principal chorus in your in your pedals and, and pedal. the, yeah, the two foot. Yeah. Okay. Play. Put all those principles together. to sing the first hymn of the day because it's usually a nice hymn of praise mm -hmm. and you've got these beautiful principal mixtures and um, then if you need to on the last verse mm -hmm. 
put a reed on there or maybe a more gentle one. And maybe not that mixture. <laughs> So, you know, because I think a lot of organists just like to play loud. <laughs> Some of the things that play nicely on here are taking advantage of all these big stops. So, just a little bit. We're going to turn the brightness off the top, but we are going to uh, use the cornet. Corne, yeah. With the, with, the, with the eight foot trumpet, but I'm not going to use that 16 foot dulcian. So here's this horn pipe. So it's fun to play with the big stops, and um, this is Robert Hebel. This is Blessed Assurance. Uh, I, you know, it's one of my favorite arrangements, partly because I know when they dedicated this room 120 years ago, they sang Blessed Assurance, and it's a hymn. You know, it's an old hymn, but we like that. So here's just. And it's also that something that I like because he weaves together Yeshu Joy and Blessed Assurance. So if you have these um, boot stops, and then the hymn, and then when you get over here, this is where you learn how to add and take away stops. <laughs> sounds, you might hear the melody in the pedal forefoot, and then you have the eight and two from the great. Uh, 
That was by Armsdorf, by the way. And this is by James Beery on an Easter hymn, Come Ye Faithful Raise the Strain. And so we'll just put it all on. Okay, so this is full organ. This is full organ. I'm going to have the box close on the swell till the very end. And I won't have all the couplers on, but generally this is what it's like. <laughs> ¶¶ 